This is the Warwick Sports Show. I'm James Lewis. Thank you very much for joining me today. Now, coming up first on the Warwick Sports Show, we're going to listen to an interview that I did with Dr. Josh Patel, who is the project officer of the Masculinities Pilot Intervention Scheme. The project is being organised by Report and Support, the Community Values Education Programme and Warwick Students' Union, and it is funded by the Institute of Advanced Teaching and Learning and the Students' Union. Now, at this point, I'd like to issue a content warning, as the collaboration is part of a wider initiative at the university to address sexual misconduct and abuse on campus. The themes of sexism, homophobia and gender-based violence are mentioned in this interview. If anyone is affected by any of the issues we raised during this programme, support is available through Report and Support, where you can make an anonymous report or speak to an advisor. The interview will last just over 20 minutes, and afterwards in the studio we'll be discussing the inclusivity of sport, particularly here on campus. And I started off this interview by asking Dr Josh what roles he held at the university. So my main job at the university is an early career teaching fellow at IATL, um, Institute for Advanced Teaching and Learning. As, as you said, I'm also the project officer for this masculinities project. Um, and then I also, as you know, James, I'm the, uh, the coach at uh, Swimming Water Polo. <laughs> yes. And if we can talk about the, the masculinities project first, and then tell us a little bit about what the project is about. So essentially, the the project, it's a targeted pilot intervention program for responding to the university's institutional kind of kind of mission to tackle sexism, uh, homophobia, gender based violence at the university, which probably also say those are going to be topics we're going to be discussing today. Right. So kind of a trigger warning. Um, the the aim really is to kind of make sure that men feel that they are in a space where they are able to contribute to these efforts. One of the things that the, the kind of preliminary research really identified was the kind of interventions that Warwick as an institution kind of currently offers are limited in how far they can really access men and allow men to participate in them. And what we wanted to do with the Masculinities Project was really show that men had a capacity to contribute to um, tackling some of these issues and actually it was their responsibility. That's really where the project came from. And the idea is essentially we've got a couple of kind of workshop programs running for the next, well, where they started in week six, I think. And uh, we've got a couple more running at the end of term. We're really very, very preliminary stages to try and think about how we might engage men in this space um, and how it might be very kind of peer led. We want it to be something which students themselves are engaged with and leading. You're talking about the project itself, and even in the name, um, it, it spelt masculinities. I suppose that yeah. was uh, on purpose. Yeah, so this was one of the discussions we had very early on, is that we didn't... When we're talking about these sorts of things, we... Again, it, ne it we wanted it to not be a sort of kind of training, right? That this isn't about us kind of standing there and going, this is how to be a man, and this is how to combat sexism in your your spaces we wanted to appreciate what it meant for men to be in what it what it meant for students and men in these spaces to be able to confront the issues that they found were important and the masculinities idea really came from this idea that you've obviously i mean it's a combination of mask and masculinities and the idea that often the kind of masculinities that men perform are a sort of mask or facade um, and again, that kind of idea of gender as a performance. And we wanted to kind of, in that very initial stage, kind of make it clear that what we were thinking about was unpacking what masculinity is, how it's performed, and the plurality of masculinity. Um, and so to have that, and it was really difficult coming up with a title with this sort of thing, to be honest. There's like there's no real like like anti sexism men's task force, you know, like these these sorts of things don't really kind of roll off the tongue. So the masculinity is, has kind of stuck. It's a nice little, it's kind of quite pithy. Um, it's an awful kind of terrible kind of pun thing, but then sometimes these things sort of work. And why has the project focused on male and male identifying students to begin with? Yeah, so this is one of the things which has been interesting. And I think it's also worth mentioning as well that it's male sports people we're really targeting, especially with these very, very early stages. And I should stress that, that again, the project is in early stages. And this is our focus here is a consequence of both our limited resources. As the project officer, I'm only part time on this project. Um, but we're 
But the secondly, it's because first of all, sexism is a men's problem, right? With the um, there's been the uh, there's a national campaign at the moment. I forget what it's called of the guy uh, stopping the um, this other guy cat calling a woman. Anyway, there's lots of campaigns at the moment which make it clear that it is men's responsibility to deal with sexism and um, the, co- the causes of gender based violence. And we also were conscious that sports teams in particular are very much centres of community at Warwick and are places where men in particular are in particularly strong positions to be influential in facilitating cultural changes in their community. One of the things that we really noticed, particularly in the preliminary feedback is, and I think with um, the kind of broader um, thing that CVET, uh, the Community and Values Education Programme and um, Report and Support, uh, who I should have actually mentioned at the beginning. These are the guys who are supporting this program, right? Um, so it's the yeah, Community Values Education Programme, Report and Support, and the Students' Union through uh, Will Brewer, Sports Officer, have come together to kind of generate this project. And it's um, uh, funded by IATL and uh, the Students' Union. Within that space, it was really recognised that men in sports clubs were capable of this kind of really positive cultural change of being in very influential positions. And that that previous research had recognised that it was really, men often felt they struggled to have the tools and know how to be able to deal with some of these issues and confront them, especially in kind of broader male groups. And being in a position where male and male students were empowered to to facilitate that kind of positive intervention and change is um, that was one of the places that we really wanted to draw on. Again, if this is going to be peer led, it needs to be derived from the experiences of men in those spaces and the kind of context that they have in the community and the places they have in the community. So that was really the focus. But it, it also needs to be said, I think that we're really, really keen to ensure that we are held responsible by female members of the community and other genders in the community so we're going to do some work particularly towards the end of this term once we've reviewed our kind of initial findings to really make sure that we are accountable in in that way and you mentioned kind of the community around sports teams in, in particular and how that kind of be used in different ways and i suppose that's something that you've experienced at your time at warwick as well yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I've been at Warwick for years and years now. And um, the I think what's always struck me is the the way in which when people come away, I don't know whether this is just because I've been in sport for the entire time, but when people come away from university, the kind of networks and the kind of things they're remembered are very much based around the kind of societies that they're involved in, the sports that they're involved in and the ways that they relate to one another. And, and I mean, this relates to my research as well, very much um, in my research in, in higher education, which is very much the, the kind of spaces where you learn the most and the spaces where you take away the most from your time at university are very much the spaces where you're engaged with your peers, you're learning from each other. You know, as much as you can talk to each other in a seminar, you can learn about how to communicate with one another during your sports, even during like, you know, Wednesday nights. That kind of learning experience is often some of the most powerful um, and it's being increasingly recognised in the literature. You'll hear words such as like co-creation kind of banded around. It's very much a recognition that the most powerful learning experiences and the most impactful kind of social change derives from the capacity of people to relate to one another. Um, and that's really what we're trying to kind of, I won't say harness, but we're really trying to tap into, it, really trying to make sure that people, that, and we recognise, I think, and the, in, the co- in the workshops, one of the really great things was men recognised that they were in a really strong position to be doing something about the sexism, the kind of gender-based violence, which is prevalent in our society and does obviously appear in Warwick. Um, and it's important to recognise, you know, that men do have an, an, an important and often underplayed, unrealised role, role to, to, to play there. Yeah, that's a really important kind of role role to recognise. And you, you mentioned co-creation and the workshops and the whole project is kind of just in its early stages, as you said. So what has been the aim of these co-creation workshops? Yeah, so the initial co-creation workshops were a, um, they were our very, very first kind of workshops involving students. The idea was essentially we needed to get men into a space where it was a kind of, 
a male safe space. We're really not, I don't know necessarily if we're happy using that word, but that's kind of what we wanted to be able to produce. We wanted to be able to produce a, a space where men felt and male identifying students felt that they were comfortable um, talking to one another about these issues. And what we really wanted to do was make sure that we were facilitating a discussion where men were telling us what they felt about their masculinity and how they related to themselves and the genders and their experiences, uh, particularly at sport and Warwick, at a kind of local level to ensure that when we kind of brought in a broader discussion about the kind of the general ideas about what causes sexism, anti uh, homophobia, gender-based violence, that they were able to very much kind of relate it to things they see in their communities, but also the kind of the positive directions that they could potentially take in addressing some of these issues and trying to bring together a sense of a positive direction that we could kind of all take collectively together. And again, I mean, I've said this so many times, but it was really trying to stress that this was something that it was peer led and very much that this was something that the students and participants in these spaces could could participate in and were able to make the kind of cultural change that I think we all kind of want to uh, want to generate. Yeah, so plenty of very important themes to discuss. Now, coming next uh, with the project, you've got the pilot workshops. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about those? The co-creation workshops were really, really super. They generated lots of really fantastic ideas about what um, what men thought about their masculinity, the kind of things they were anxious and um, feeling vulnerable about. So our next stage was to really think, okay, so we've got a kind of basic understanding of um, these the issues that that people want to raise and how potentially we could facilitate discussion and action about them. Let's now see and let's produce kind of what we've called pilot development workshops, which are targeted to a number of sports teams, which are have been picked because they represent a real diversity of the sorts of sports communities that we have at Warwick. So there are men's only teams, there are mixed, mixed teams. At the moment, we are emphasizing obviously male experience um, and the capacity of men to kind of really discuss and generate positive outcomes on these issues. But we want, what we wanted to do was kind of think, okay, if we bring these teams together as a kind of more in a kind of cohesive way. The last time was the co-creation workshops were very much an open interview. This is very much a, we'd like to help you specifically as these specific communities think about the positive directions that you could take these issues and these kind of problems. Um, and so that's really the kind of, this very much now is we have some kind of idea what the issues are. Let's now take the next step, say target very, very specific communities and say, what can we help you with? How can we help you guys organize yourselves to identify and address these issues? Um, and to kind of even further kind of develop the project as something which can be rolled out more holistically in 2022, 2023, perhaps to a broader group of sports teams, perhaps involving women in that women's sports in that process as well. And then even further, even more broadly in the kind of long term. So this is very much the very, very early stages of something which is hopefully, it might not be called masculinities in two, three years time. That might just be a small effect, like part of a much broader peer support network. There's all sorts of things that we're interested in taking this. Um, and it is very much about getting people's input at the very, very kind of early stages. Super. And you talking about how important it is kind of for this to be peer led, peer facilitators are going to be involved with the delivery yeah. of, of the workshops. Want to tell us a little bit more about that. So yeah, we've got in the co-creation workshops, we just said to everybody, if you're interested in helping us out with this sort of stuff, We'd, obviously, again, we need this to be peer-led. It's not going to work if it's just me on a stage shouting at people. It really needs to be that people there are engaged in what we're doing and are able to kind of form those networks at, at the kind of, I say, we're going to say grassroots level um, and, and get people on board with what we're doing. So the peer facilitators are hopefully going to be, we've given them some training, we've given them some kind of sense of what the, the projects in the pilot intervention stage is going to be like, and they are hopefully just going to attach themselves to the groups that we're going to be forming. They're just going to kind of be able to, they've already kind of been through the co-creation workshops, so they've got a kind of broader sense of what we're after in terms of the atmosphere that we want to create, the kind of discussions that we want to facilitate and the kind of 
um, openness that we want to, we really want to kind of gather from from those spaces. So they they will be attaching themselves. We've got uh, the three kind of people who are running the uh, at a kind of staff level, which is myself a colleague from Report and Support and uh, Will Brewer. Um, and then we've got kind of auxiliary um, peer facilitators who are going to help us kind of steer the sessions, kind of ensure that we've got someone in the room who can call us out if we say something which is completely unrelated to someone else's experience. I was a student, you know, like very, very, very recently, but even my experience in that space is going to be very different from somebody else's. So the peer facilitators really are there to facilitate a dialogue, to make sure that people who are in the sessions realize that it is not just some random guy because he's got paid, that it's actually someone who is also engaged in, in a kind of similar way. And we're hoping in the future that this sort of peer facilitator role can expand out, become a kind of sustained process where you're very much reflecting on the kind of actionable policies and actionable directions that sports teams and perhaps more widely are taking to tackle these issues and form a kind of coordinating role with execs, welfare officers and um, other, other members of sports communities at Warwick and uh, again, eventually more widely. And you outlined kind of how you could see the project going in the future. It seems like there are lots of different areas where uh, the project, whatever name it will be called, could be really useful and beneficial for sport and the Warwick community. It is so open at the moment because, again, it needs to be peer led. So, whatever, what we really didn't want to say, so your, your listeners will probably be aware of the kind of active bystander courses that CVEP are running. That is very much a kind of here's a set of resources that might be of help to you. We're going to deliver them to you. And that is obviously extremely valuable in, in certain respects. But what it means is that it's very much a kind of, it's, it's a kind of, there's a kind of box that is in and it goes, here you go. Here's the stuff. Off you go. And what we really wanted to make sure that we kind of have is an ongoing process where peers are able to reflect and continuously kind of evaluate what they're doing in, addressing some of these issues. And I think it's really important to remember that this is just one kind of, actually it's really important for me to remember as well, because I get too excited. This is not going to be something which is going to solve sexism forever, right? It's about making kind of the positive social change in the communities that we have. So when new members of our community arrive, they're in a space where they are able to, you know, open up about their experiences, they're able to kind of question some of the values about their masculinity that they might have internalized and try and get them to think about which, how kind of, you know, their own mental health, about how men relate to their own relationships, about their, their emotions, sorry, about how they relate to women and other genders, um, how they relate to their own sexuality and other sexuality, how they relate to the kind of media that they that they see. I just saw today Ryan Gosling, uh, the first still of him in the new Barbie film. And oh my God, there's so much to unpack there. Like <laughs> the, the standard of masculinity that is there. Um, I was kind of like, oh God, <laughs> like, this is, uh, we're going to, we need to have a, like a cultural discussion about what this is. Cause there is some serious kind of, uh, I mean, it's, I, I think it's kind of almost self aware that how much it's kind of plasticized mm. and how much it's um, a kind of, I'm not even going to say ideal. It's just an abstraction of masculinity. It's like a distillation of a cultural expectation of what a man should be. Um, but I think it's so important to have spaces where men feel that they can address those issues rather than just being like, oh my God, that guy has amazingly chiseled abs. <laughs> you know, like, what could that do to a guy? What does that do to the kind of expectation of what he has to be in the world? I mean, his relationship with women, his relationship with other men. So to have a kind of space where, just in the university, where people are able to kind of reflect on those things i think is is really really important and for anyone that's been kind of listening to this discussion and is the the intended uh, audience uh, for this project and what are the next opportunities for them to be able to get involved at the moment obviously we've got the peer development workshops those are a closed invitation to certain sports teams if you've been um contacted about that <laughs> please sign up <laughs> um yeah, I can't stress that enough. It's really, really important for us to have a kind of comprehensive 
um, kind of broader community discussion about these issues. The We're going to be, I suspect, obviously quiet over the next kind of couple of months after these development workshops because we need to review our research, but we'll also probably be generating some sort of um, peer-led workshop program in week zero, so kind of pre-season time, I think, is our current expectation. So that'll probably be our next um our next opportunity to really kind of engage with the project. There's also, we do have a, um, a mailing list that on our website, um, and that's obviously the, one of the places to go if you want more information about what we're doing, warwick.ac.uk slash masculinities. Um, and you can sign up there for any updates and any information about our research when we disseminate it or when it gets produced. And if there's anyone that's not been the kind of the intended target of this project, but feels like they would like to take part in something similar, kind of what can they uh, what can they look at at the university? So we've got the the main thing really to be doing is we do want to obviously make sure that we're accountable to women. So when we take this forward um, in kind of 2022, 2023, I think there will be opportunities for women to get involved. Again, it's probably something um that would be worth signing up to our mailing list um and we'll be keeping that updated regularly with with what we're getting on with the other thing to do is also to look at the kind of offerings that cvep um, the community values education program at warwick are offering particularly um the active bystander class uh, courses if uh, if you're involved in that not involved in that at the moment that would be one of the things to really get to get involved in that was Dr. Josh Patel, Project Officer of the Masculinities Pilot Intervention Scheme. Now, thank you very much to Josh for giving up his time and discussing the project with me. Now, as a reminder, if anyone is affected by any of the issues raised during this programme, support is available through Report and Support, where you can make an anonymous report or speak to an advisor. The link to the website is in our social media bios, and the website address is reportandsupport.warwick.ac.uk. Now, we'll be back with the Warwick Sports Show shortly, where we'll be discussing the inclusivity of sport on campus. Across campus, online and on 12.51am. This is your student radio station.